dear students, welcome to Experimental Techniques and Material Characterization, lecture number 12. I'm Dr. Parvez Ahmed. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will have a discussion on uh, spectral processing and uh, EDS. So this is uh, the part uh, fourth and the last part uh, of the lectures on energy dispersive spectroscopy. So let's proceed towards uh, today's topic that is uh, spectral processing uh, in the uh, EDS. So first, uh, you can see that uh, we will have some discussion on the spectral processing that is uh, about uh, background uh, correction. So here you can see uh, two spectrum. So the first spectrum uh, is basically the characteristic X-rays that we need to, uh, I mean, so here uh, in this first spectrum, uh, uh, we, we, will, we will need to discuss about the characteristic X-rays uh, that we need to quantify are right atop the continuum and the continuum are uh, distribution to uh, the characteristic uh, counts uh, uh, that must be uh, subtracted. So here uh, you can see that uh, the linear uh, interpolations uh, that we can see uh, from uh, B to D, I mean here you can see that from uh, B to D we have the linear uh, interpolations uh, that will be an error due to uh, the abrupt drop of the continuum at the chromium uh, uh, chromium k alpha absorption edge uh, with the energy that is equal to 5.989 kilo electron uh, volt so uh, the bc i mean if you if you look at here uh, from b to c so it's possible but uh, critically dependent upon uh, having a good spectral resolution that is smaller than 160 electron volt. Uh, so AB, I mean here you can see the AB, uh, I mean it, it would be preferable. So the AB in this particular conditions will be uh, preferable. But here if we look at the top, uh, if we look at the bottom spectrum, so here you can see that we don't have such a situation just like we observed at the top one that is from B to D. Uh, but here if you look uh, so we don't have such a uh, situation so doing background fit of a complex uh, stainless steel uh, i mean th th this is the situation for uh, stainless uh, steel i mean uh, if, if you are trying to do it for uh, 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 the background fit of a complex stainless steel uh, so it will be uh, i mean look like uh, this uh, background modeling or uh, filtering so corrections for the background is done by either of two methods. Uh, what are those two methods? Uh, I mean, they, they, they are developing a physical model for continuum or using signals uh, to nice uh, filtering. I mean, these are the two modeling. So modeling is based upon the Kramer law. Uh, that is, uh, there is a function describing the continuum at each energy level. Uh, that is a function of mean atomic number and a Meyer detector uh, response. So about the gra uh, background modeling, uh, so here again you can see the, uh, the two uh, spectrum. So here at the top uh, is the spectrum of uh, Kakanoi uh, on blend uh, with the supreme process calculated uh, background base, uh, background uh, that is based upon the Kramer uh, law. And if you look uh, here at the bottom, so this is the spectrum uh, and this spectrum uh, shows after the background has been subtracted. So uh, copper uh, is the artifact uh, and manganese is actually present at uh, uh, smaller than 700 uh, ppm. So this is after the background uh, modeling and you can see, uh, I mean after the background modeling, so you can see the exact difference. I mean, uh, I mean uh, if you compare both the uh, the spectrum so you can see that uh, what actually the, the spectrum look like after the background uh, modeling so uh, we also have the background filtering uh, so uh, theoretically a uh, Fourier analysis will separate out the low frequency continuum signal and high frequency noise from the medium frequency characteristic peak however uh, there is uh, uh, overlap and the result is poor fit uh, a better uh, filter is the top hat filter uh, where no assumptions are made about the spectrum and only the mathematical aspect of signal versus noise are uh, considered. So here we have uh, the hot uh, top hat uh, filtering. 
uh, I mean the top hat filtering you can see it here so this filters uh, move across the EDS spectrum uh, with an optimally defined window uh, that is approximately two pull width half maxima for manganese K alpha with energy approximately equal to 320 uh, electron volt and uh, assign a new value for uh, the central channel based upon subtracting the value uh, in the left and right channel from uh, the center uh, where uh, we have the value HK uh, chosen to a total area uh, that is equal to uh, 0. So thus in a, a sample spectrum which shown here uh, in this uh, bottom spectrum uh, which shown here uh, the central channel that has been indicated with the positive here this central channel uh, when the left and right channels are subtracted uh, so at least a value equal to zero so here you can see that this one uh, this bottom one is a filter spectrum and this is the gaussian pulse linear so here we have subtracted the left and right channel i mean this one and this one you can see that the negative sign uh, so they are being the left uh, and right the channel they are being subtracted uh, so we have uh, this filter uh, spectrum a more artifact uh, that is a, a pulse uh, file up so here you can see again there is a short period of time that we denoted by uh, tor naught uh, during each x-ray capture by the EDS detectors uh, when the detectors can capture a second x-ray by mistake so the electronic cannot distinguish this some peak uh, from the true signal x-ray peak and file uh, and file is up uh, with all the other peak from the elements uh, that are should be present there so for two major uh, element uh, could be three some peaks for three to six uh, and reality uh, you only see one or two uh, unless you zoom it uh, to the background level so always consider their possible uh, phases I mean that this, this is the care you should take uh, especially in the conditions uh, when we have uh, the peak there being uh, false uh, pile up so uh, some peak uh, 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 what's mean by some peak so in quantitative analysis of silicates uh, there are some combinations of elements uh, uh, that is uh, for which the K alpha peaks that falls uh, close to the K alpha uh, K alpha peaks of uh, element possibly uh, present uh, that's been uh, indicated in the table below. So here is the sum peak, uh, it's the element and it's the uh, energy separate. So uh, we have a sum peak that is for uh, magnesium and calcium. Uh, so the element is a vanadium and the energy that separate them as a sex electron volt. Then we have silicon and calcium. Uh, so the element is chromium and the uh, uh, energy uh, that separate it uh, is 18 electron volt uh, magnesium and potassium uh, so the element is uh, titanium and uh, the, the uh, uh, electron volt that separate them is uh, 57 uh, similarly for aluminium uh, plus silicon uh, some peak uh, we have uh, the element is uh, potassium and uh, the energy that separate them uh, that is the electron volt separate is uh, 87 uh, electron volts separate and for the potassium uh, sorry for the calcium calcium uh, we uh, I mean uh, uh, is, is that uh, element a uh, nickel and uh, it has 91 electron volt uh, separation more artifact so there is always a potential for stray x-rays being uh, detected uh, it does pay for uh, phase for the ADS operator to understand what the path is for the electron beam and for the x-rays and know what other elements might uh, show up unintentionally uh, this is particularly true for the ADX associated with the TEM uh, where this, uh, the specimens are routinely set on the grad I mean uh, you know that uh, in the case of the TEM uh, we use a copper grad for the sample uh, to be analyzed and the higher energy that is the energy is uh, the, and the TAM is very high that is almost uh, 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 equal to uh, 200 kilo electron volt. 
so electron can go through the specimen and hit a metal part of the column or chamber so with uh, with the resulting x rays finding a way uh, back to the detector so uh, more artifact uh, so another thing uh, many sam labs uh, they use a uh, gold or palladium coating on the specimen so these very thin coat will produce a definite x-ray field i mean in order to avoid uh, uh, some of the uh, background noise or in order to have uh, uh, i mean uh, a clearly visible peak so some of the lab uh, they normally have uh, the edx with the sam uh, so they utilize uh, uh, they take help from the coating so they most normally they they, they they do the gold or palladium coating on the uh, their the, their specimen so with the help of uh, that they can produce uh, i mean very excellent uh, result with the help of the uh, coating so evolution of the ads spectrals from the specimens to the monitor so the spectrum on the outer uh, monitor uh, that is d i mean here it's shown here uh, this one we're talking about uh, this spectrum is the result of many things impacting the real spectrum generated uh, within the specimens uh, if you look here at a so uh, this spectrum uh, this a uh, spectrum uh, this a spectrum uh, it is at an extent of donation uh, within the specimen uh, so there is only the k alpha k beta and uh, continuum and in instant letter uh, that is shown here at b so here you can see that uh, at b uh, the x-ray leave the specimens so two things can happen some of the continuum x-ray above 5.4 Four six four kiloelectron volt observed, uh, producing the drop and the continuum uh, there. So also in B, uh, the lower energy uh, continuum is observed, causing the top of and the uh, spectrum there. So when the X-ray hit the detector, just like uh, you can see it here in case of C, so silicon fluorescent peak can result, and after signal processing, uh, that is being shown here at D so uh, after the signal processing the display will show peak broadening so uh, some peaks uh, silicon expect peak uh, silicon escape peak uh, further decrease of intensity and low energy uh, on night so that, that that's how been uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, we have the evolution of ADS uh, spectrum I mean you people have seen that that how uh, uh, we have the evolutions uh, of spectrum and the EDX analysis. I mean, we, we started from the A uh, and then we proceed uh, slowly and steadily with different factors affecting the uh, the spectrum in the EDX analysis. So you here you can see, you can clearly visualize the difference from A to uh, A to D. So here you can see it's one part of the, uh, one type of the spectrum. So while traveling from A to D, uh, you can clearly see that how the spectrum has been changed and we also uh, i mean discuss about that why and are what are the possible reasons uh, for uh, changing the spectrum uh, from uh, the first pass to the last part so that's all we have for uh, this lecture uh, series on adx uh, thanks for watching uh, see you in the coming lecture uh, for uh, another uh, type of the uh, characterization instrument so tell then Bye-bye.